Hey, this is Greg, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to program a scoreboard in Scratch. Now, I'm not talking about the very limited method that you'll often see where people just show the score variable on screen. Rather, I'm talking about a much more dynamic setup where you would actually build your score variable into an integrated scoreboard, or maybe you want to change the size of your score, or maybe you want to make your score animated, or maybe you even want to make your score fly around the screen like I've done here in this snake game. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned for this tutorial. Okay, so let's jump into this. I already have this basic project set up uh, since I mainly want to focus on the creation of the scoreboard. But just to show you, if I hit play here, I do have this little ship that I've created. And if I just move left or right with my arrow keys, then I can use my space bar to fire. And if the meteor is hit by this bullet here, it will go ahead and disappear. Uh, so I have that basic setup set up already. So let me just exit out so we can see our code here. And again, I'm going to focus mainly on the creation of the scoreboard since that's what you're here for. But just really quickly, I have the ship, and the ship uh, will get positioned at the bottom of the screen when the green arrow, uh, the green flag is clicked. And then forever, it's checking to see if the left or right arrow key is pressed. And when that happens, it calls this custom block here, which will then determine if it's going to move the ship to the right or to the left. And then also when the space bar is pressed, a clone of this bullet is created. And so the bullet, when it starts as a clone here, it's going to go to where the ship is. And then forever, I'm just checking to see if it's either touching the edge of the screen. Uh, and then also forever here, I'm checking to see if it's touching a meteor. If it is touching a meteor, it broadcasts this kill meteor uh, message here. And the meteor picks that up. And so the meteor will delete itself if it's touching the bullet. And then also the meteor, when it starts on screen as a clone, it's just slowly going to fall and spin and start at a random position at the top of the screen there. So very basic. We're not going to focus on that. But that gives me the basic setup for my game. Now every time that meteor is destroyed, I want to add to the player's score. And of course, we want to have that custom scoreboard. Now if I do jump over to my backdrop here, I will see that also when the game begins, I do have a score variable that I've set up and I set that to zero at the beginning of the game and then forever it's creating the meteors and then when a meteor does get killed and I get an update score broadcast. So if I go back to the meteor, when the meteor does uh, get killed here, we broadcast this update score. So here on the backdrop on the stage, I'm receiving that. And when I receive the update score, I will change the score by 10. So let's talk about first how usually people do show the score in their Scratch games and talk about why it's limited. So with any variable in Scratch, you probably know that you can come over here and then you can just click it in the menu here and you can get it to show up on your screen. So if I check this score variable, you can see we can see it up here up top. And so if I were to start my game now, let me just go full screen and I hit play. I do have this score display here. And so I can see the variable and I can watch it update as I play the game. So this is the way to show the score in your game and it, it is useful, it does work. However, what are the limitations of this method? Well, for one, from a graphic design perspective, if you don't like the way this looked looks here, you don't have too many options. So let me just uh, close out of this it here and if I get back in my project view, I can come over here and I can right click and I can change this from the large readout, which it is now, Actually, this is a normal readout. Here's the large readout. And so it gets rid of the text. It just shows the number. Or I can go to the slider view. So those are my three options. Uh, and then whichever one I check on here when I actually go and play the game, that's going to be the option that shows up. But those three options, that is pretty limited. What if I want to use a different style of text? What if I want to change the size of this to some sort of custom size? That's a problem. I can't really do that. Also, if I come back into my project view and I come down to the variables and I just start looking at my options, I can show and hide that variable. So let me just bring one of these out here. So dynamically in my game, if I go and I find this score variable here, I can show it or let me just grab this hide block here. There's also a hide block. So hide score. So I did it dynamically in my game. If I click on these, we can see what they do. Actually, I have the the wrong variable selected here. Let me try that again. You can see that you can hide it and you can show it. So dynamically in the game, I could make that score turn on and off. However, there's nothing in here that lets me position this. And there's no way to specifically access this display uh, of the score 
and change the position dynamically in the game or change the size of it. I can't do that. So what are my other options sort of built into Scratch here for displaying the score? Well, I can think of one option. So if I come under, come under my looks menu, there's actually this save block. And actually you can't get to the save block while you're on the stage. You have to be under one of your sprites. So let me go to this ship block here. And now under the looks menu, you see I have these save blocks up here. And you see they have a space for dropping a variable. So I could come under my variables and I could choose that score variable and I could put it into that save block. And now in my forever loop here, after the game starts on my ship, I can come in here and I can drop that score. So let's see what that does now when I come in here and I'll go full screen and I'll run this game. And so we see now I do have this little speech bubble and I can see that variable. And so now my score is going to update every time I come in here and I shoot a meteor. But again, what do we have here? We now suddenly have a way to move the variable around the screen and have a display of it. That's nice, but it's very limited because you're locked into this little speech bubble view from a graphic design perspective. Again, if you want to change the way this looks, you really can't. You're really stuck with this. So once again, we have something that sort of works, but it doesn't really give us the options we want. We'd want to have a lot more options. So now let's get into that. How do we create more options for ourselves? What's the better way of doing this? Well, the solution we're going to come up with is creating a custom sprite to handle the score. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw another sprite. So I'm going to come in here and I'll zoom in a decent amount here. And I'm just going to grab this text here and I'll set my color to black here. You could set it to whatever, but I'm going to make it black and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start and I'm going to start by just creating the number one. We're at custom position one. So I'm going to make this a one. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drag it down and I want the center to sort of snap to the center there. Now you have to pay special attention to the size here. So right now this is 13 by 28. So what I actually want to do is I'm not so concerned about how tall it is, but I am concerned about the width right now, which is 13. I'm just going to make it a little smaller. So if I hold down my alt key or that would be option on the Mac, I'm just going to resize that down so that it's 10 pixels wide. And you sort of need to know that because it's going to come into play as we position our digits here. So again, that's a one. And if you think of any possible score, it can only contain the digits zero through nine. So we're going to need 10 digits here. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to duplicate. Then I'll just double click here. I'll change that to a two again duplicate, change this to a three and so on. And I'm going to do this. So I have the digits uh, one through nine. And actually for my 10 here, I'm just going to use a zero, the zero digits. So the digits zero through nine, but I'm starting with one, I'm going one through nine and then I'll create a zero at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So there it is. It didn't take me very long. It only took me about 30 seconds just to really quickly copy and change the digit. And they're all positioned. They're all sized. So they're 10 pixels wide and they're all positioned snapped right to that center anchor point there. Now you have to resist the temptation to think I need a number or a costume for every possible score because of course that would not be a good solution. That would take forever. You wouldn't really be have a game that would have endless scores because you would be locked into you know, spending a ridiculous amount of time and that just would not work. Uh, but when you think about it, any number really, it just makes is made up of those digits zero through nine. So now we just need a way of programmatically, if it has more than that one digit of adding those digits and spacing correctly. So let's get into the programming for this and see how easy it's actually going to be to come up with something that can take our score variable and write it out on screen using these costumes. Okay, so first I'll just go ahead and rename this sprite score since that's what we're going to be what we use this for. And then let's switch over to our code view now, code, code view, and talk about how we're going to set this up. So first as a reminder, you'll remember if we go back to the meteor here, anytime the remedi meteor receives this kill message when a bullet hits a meteor, uh, it's then going to update the score. So it broadcasts this update score. And if I go to my stage here, you'll remember that we start the game by setting the score to zero. And then anytime it receives this update score, it changes the score by 10. So that's the mechanism we're using now for changing our score. But how do we then draw that score on screen? So I'm going to come back now to this score sprite we just set up that has our digits zero through nine. 
And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start adding some code to this. So what I'm going to do in here is actually create a custom block and I'm going to call it draw score. So I'm going to come under my block blocks here. And for custom blocks like this, really what you're doing is creating a function, a program, a function. So if you work in other coding languages, you're probably familiar with the term function or program. And it's just basically a way you can call another set of instructions and you can pass in variables if you want to pass in variables. So I'm going to go ahead and make a block and we're going to uh, add a number input here. And so the block name, we're going to call this draw score. And what we're actually going to pass in here is we're going to pass in the score because we have to tell it what the current score is. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And so now we have this defined draw score. So we also have now over here this custom block that we can add in. OK, but so let's start by defining this draw score. How are we going to draw that score on screen? OK, so what I'm going to want to do here is come under my control blocks and I'm going to get a loop here. So I'm going to get a repeat loop. And how often do I want to repeat this? Well, I have to go through each digit in my current score and I have to draw that on screen using the costumes of the sprite, right? Well, if you go under your operators tab here on this menu here, you actually can come down and you can find this block here, this length of, and this takes an input. And so it's by default, it has Apple here. If I were to pass it Apple, what it's going to do, it's just going to count the number of letters in this input here. So one, two, three, four, five. So if I drop this in here, it would repeat this loop five times. Well, if you pass in something different, like a number 10, for example, then it's going to look at one, it's going to look at zero, and it's going to count that as two digits, two digits that are, that's so the length is two. So then it would repeat this loop two times. So this is actually going to do what we want to do because we want to go through each digit in our score. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that 10 with our score variable. So anytime that variable updates, it's going to use that and it's going to repeat that number of times. So I'm going to use this repeat block. And then as I step through here, I wanted to update the score, but I'm going to use a, I'm going to need a couple more variables here just to keep track of my iterations through the loop here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come under my variables menu here and I'll go ahead and make a couple more quick variables. And this can be for all sprites or for this sprite only. It's not going to matter in this case, I don't think, but we'll do this sprite only. And so I'm going to create just an I variable and I'll create another variable and I'll call it X. Now it doesn't really matter what you call these. This is just a way for me to sort of have variables that I can step through and keep track of what, what loop through the loop I'm on here. So variable X and variable I. So go ahead and we'll go ahead and click OK. So now what I'm going to do is before I get into this loop, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use this set and I'm going to set I to one. So we're going to start the loop at one. And then as I go through the loop here, what I'm going to want to do as I get to the bottom here, I'm going to want to change I by one. Okay, so we'll put that inside the loop and this is on top of the loop here. Okay, so we start on pass one. So as we go through pass one, I want to be able to pull that first digit of our score, right? So how am I going to do that? Well, so again, I'm going to come down here to these operator blocks and you're going to see this one that's letter something of something. So you have the two inputs here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this and we want to actually come over here on my variables now and I'm going to pull out another one here and I want to set this X variable to be whatever the current digit is we're on. So I can do that by dragging this in here and so I want to set X to letter I. So in other words, this is the first one of our score. And so when you're working inside a loop like this, let me just go ahead and put this up here. And if I drag this up here, when you create a custom block and you're passing a variable in, you can then drag it from the top here and put it in your code. So whatever variable comes in, you can then use within this function, within this custom block. So I pass in this score variable and then I'm using it down here. So I'm setting my X variable to be letter I. And so the first pass through, this is going to be letter one of score. Second time through, it would be letter two of score and so on because I need to grab that because then based on what I'm pulling I'm going to pick what costume I want to display on screen so in other words if it's a seven the digits a seven I'm going to use my seven costume if it's a six I'm going to use that costume for six because you remember if I step back and I look at the costumes here costume one here is is the number uh, one right up here costume one is one two is two 
3 is 3. And then when I get down to 0, I just remember, after zero, remember that 0 is costume 10 here on screen. All right, so I'm going to come back to my code here. So all I need to do here is come under my looks menu here, and you should find this switch costume. Switch costume 2. And so here it is right here. And right after I set that X to be that, whatever that digit is, then I'm going to switch my costume to X. So come back to that variable. Now switch costume to X. So it's going to change the costume right there to X. And X is going to be whatever that digit is. Now the next part of this is you have to realize that we're going to need multiple versions of this score. Because if you have three digits, you're going to need to display three digits on screen. So just having the one score sprite isn't going to work. And that's where clones come into play. You can use clones when you need multiple versions of the same sprite. So usually what I like to do is work with clones only because you can end up with some issues if you have your, your main variable and then clones. And then sometimes all your clones will accidentally create other clones. So we're going to have to watch out for that. And I think you'll see what I mean when I, when I get into this. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on screen and I'm going to go under my events and when clicked. And so this is the main original score sprite. And when clicked, I actually want to hide that because I'm going to work with just clones here. So I'm going to come, come under looks and we have this hide. So that gets rid of that original score thing. And now we have it in here and we're defining draw score. And as we go through each digit there, once I switch the costume, then I actually want to show a version on screen. So that's where I'm going to need a clone. So let me come down under my control variables, create a clone. And I'm actually creating a clone of myself because I'm on the score sprite right so i want to create a clone of score so that would be create clone of myself and then remember we want to change i by one at the bottom of this loop each time so that the next time it loops through we're then pulling the next digit the next costume well the one other thing we need to do here is if i did not change this uh the x coordinate so in other words we might define where we want this on screen i haven't done that yet but if we don't change that x coordinate each time then the digits are just going to write on top of themselves. So if you think of a number, like you're just going from left to right. And remember the length was 10. So let's start by changing. So again, if I come back and show you the costume here, the length of this is 10, right? You can tell up here, you see 10 by 22. So that's 22 units high and 10 wide. And that width is really what I'm concerned about because I want to be able to space each digit. So I'm going to come back to my code. And in here, I will go under my motion and I'll find this change X block. And so change X by 10. So I'm going to put that at the bottom right there. Okay, so great. We have this define draw score, which seems like it's set up the way we want. It loops through this I variable. So each time it goes through the score, it's going to the next digit. It's taking that digit. It's assigning it to X, this X variable. So we know what costume to pull. It creates a clone. And then it iterates the I variable for the next run through the loop and it changes X so that the next digit will be placed farther over. Now we might want to set up where on screen we're going to do that, but we could also do that under the when I start as clone block. So let me go to uh, controls when I start as clone and we'll bring this on screen. Now remember, when we first create this original score th sprite, we're hiding that. So then when we start as clo uh, clone here, we're going to make sure that the clone does show. So we're going to add this show block right there. So then the next thing we need to consider is that we, ha we have this function now. When do we want this to trigger? Well, we don't really want to put it on when clicked or when I start as clone. We want it to trigger every time the score updates, right? So if you remember, if we go back to our backdrop here, we have this uh, when I receive update score. So remember that gets broadcast every time a meteor is killed. That's when we want the score to update, when I receive update score. So if I come back to my uh, score sprite here, I'm gonna go under events and I'll find that when I receive, and again, I'm gonna pull out when I receive update score. And this is when I'll use this custom block. So if I go back under my blocks, now that I've defined this, I can pull this over. So when I receive update score, I want it to draw the score on screen and I'm going to pass in the score variable. So if I go under variables, 
this uppercase score here. That's my score variable. So now every time I receive update score, I want to draw the score on screen. Okay, so I think we're almost there now, but I can think of a couple things. First of all, we haven't decided where on this screen is this is gonna be. So let's go under our looks here, and let's grab a, uh, actually let's go under motion is where I want it to go, and let's grab one of these go-to X, Y blocks. So again, we can put it anywhere on the screen we want. Let's just say for the moment we wanted to put it right in the middle of the screen. That might not be where you want it because you might want to have a scoreboard up top. But for now, just for testing this, let's have a go to zero, zero, zero. Now I could put this a couple different places. I could put it on the original sprite when clicked just so it shows up right there. I could put it when I start as a clone. I could have go to X or I could even put it in this function here. So every time it's just telling it to go to zero, zero. So I'll just drop it in up here for now. The other things you might want to do is you don't specifically have to set the size. I think by default it's going to come uh, in as 100%. But if you wanted to maybe, you know, adjust some positioning and stuff, it doesn't hurt to have a set size block. So I'll go under my looks here and I will go ahead and set the size to 100% just to make sure it is that 10 pixels wide. Remember my costume is 10 units, 10 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and every time I draw a score, go to a uh, zero, zero and set size to 100. Now, I can think of one potential problem of this, and I want to see, do you, do you see what the one problem is going to be? Let me just go ahead and run this, and I'll, it'll demonstrate to you what the problem's going to be. Okay, so I've cleared my other displays, and I just have the score variable display showing here, and then of course we're going to create our new score variable at 0, 0. So let's, let's play this game now and see what happens. So a meteor starts to come down and I shoot it. And so, okay, right away I've got a zero when the score says 10. So that's the first problem. And then now it says 100. And as I shoot, it seems like the number's getting a little thicker. Uh, so we got some stuff going on. And then suddenly here at 500, I'm hitting space bar and I cannot create a new bullet. So what are all these problems? Why are they happening? Okay, we're gonna debug our, our code here and figure out what's causing those problems we just saw. But I just wanna express this is gonna be a super important skill for you to work on because your ability to stay patient and to debug your code is gonna be the thing that makes you advance as a programmer probably more than anything else. You think of mistakes as these awful things, but the ability to learn from your mistakes, you're gonna learn more from the mistakes you make in coding than those times you just write a program perfectly. And even I, even though I had written this code before, I knew one of the bugs I showed you was gonna occur, but the other one is actually a mistake that I accidentally made, and I'm sorta of glad I did because it gives us another opportunity for learning. So really, as a coder, just embrace that you are going to make mistakes, and then learning from those mistakes, understanding what's going on and why the mistake occurred, that really is an opportunity, and the more you do that, the more you're gonna advance as a, as a coder, and then the more you are gonna be able to write stuff that works the first time or after a couple tries. Because we're all gonna get stuck, we're all gonna make mistakes, but just stay calm, uh, approach your code just from a, a sort of a detective point of view, take your time, work through, and you're gonna be able to get it to work. So let's figure out what's going on with our code right here. Why did we see those mistakes? So the first mistake, the one that I knew was gonna occur there, is when our bullets suddenly stopped working. And you can even have a game crash totally. So if something just stops working or your game crashes suddenly, that's usually a clone problem. That's usually something where your code is stuck in a loop or it's building up garbage or artifacts. And so you may know that Scratch has a 300 clone limit and if you exceed that, then you're not gonna be able to create more clones on screen. So why did that happen in this game, in this instance? Well, if you look at this, every time I receive update score, this script here is gonna fire. So just let's just imagine our score is 10. So then if it's going through the length of 10, it's gonna take that one digit and then it's gonna to move to the zero digit. And so it's gonna go through this twice. And on those first two trips through, when draw score fires, it's gonna create a clone each time. So we're gonna have two clones on screen. But as of right now, we have no way of getting rid of a clone. We have not built that into our script. So then suddenly you hit another meteor, draw score fires again, and so we have two clones. Each of those clones then is going through this script, and they're each creating two more clones. So they create four clones and they started as two, so now we have six clones. 
Next time you hit a meteor, six clones suddenly are creating two clones each. And then if your score becomes even higher and becomes three digits, then suddenly every clone that you've created thus far is going to be creating three more clones. And so you can quickly see how this becomes exponential growth and eventually it's going to clog up your game because you're going to hit that 300 clone limit and suddenly you're not going to be able to create any more clones on screen. Or sometimes it can be just something that just quickly hogs all the computer, me computer memory uh, and your game is just going to crash. So let's that's the first problem that we were experiencing. So let's address that first and then we'll address the second problem after that because there is another problem. So to address this first problem, I got to figure out how to get rid of of the clones and sort of clear it out. So each time I draw a score, I'm, cr I'm creating new clones, but I'm getting rid of the old clones. So what I need here is when I receive update score, if I bring that on screen again, so let me just go here under here, under my events, and I'm gonna do another instance of when I receive update score. So every time I receive update score, I'm gonna tell it that I wanna delete this clone. So if you think about this, anytime update score is broadcast like that, any clone here of score is going to receive that message and then delete itself. So any digits that you have as part of your scoreboard, when you receive this, they will delete themselves. But since we have this firing twice here, it's also still going to launch into the draw score. And when it does, it's still going to draw the score on screen. So we clear out the clones with this delete clone when update score fires, but then also we draw score and we go in here and so it creates the new version. So let's just jump back in here again and we should have gotten rid of that problem of our game suddenly crashing where we can't create new, new bullets. So if I do this now, you notice we've gotten rid of that problem of you know the extra digit we were seeing and we've also um, made it so our game's not going to crash. We can keep playing. We're going to be able to create, creating, uh, keep creating new bullets. New meteors are still showing up. So we've gotten rid of that problem of too many clones and our game just crashing. However, look, the score is still off by 10, so we still have that problem. All right, so let me stop and let me jump back here. First, I want to say you might be wondering why were we sometimes seeing 100 when the score on screen was supposed to be showing us 10. So the other reason that had problems, and this actually is a clue to solving that second problem, you will run into these problems of game flow. Your code gets uh, executed uh, sort of from a top down when you're in a section, but then you start to have these branching elements where you have game flow that you have to watch out for. For example, when update score fires, suddenly you have this branch and this branch of code firing off at the same time. So the reason why you were seeing that extra digit, I think, is because when you had a two-digit score, uh, and so you had those two clones on screen, and then suddenly each of those clones was receiving this update score and going into this at the same time. So can you, you can imagine that, where they both set the initial position at 0, 0, but then suddenly when they come through here and X is changed by 10, they each fire off that and so suddenly the x position on screen gets changed by 20 if you think about that and so that's why you were seeing another digit that was slid over to the right even farther because the second time through here uh, each of them had already gone through once and so x actually got changed by 20. a little confusing but if you take your time sometimes these game flow issues are what's causing your problem and if we just jump back here again and we can think about this and we can see the score variable up here the fact that i'm always behind here 10 from what my score should be that's a good sign that that's probably a game flow issue so it seems like it's drawing the score before the score has a chance to actually update so i think we've made a mistake with where we've put this in here so I have it firing when update score, we're going to draw score. But let's go look at our other code to think about how we could have done this better. Okay, so when I receive update score, change score by 10. So a meteor gets killed. Here's the meteor code. And if it's touching bullet, it broadcasts this update score. So when it broadcasts update score, a couple things are happening. Here, 
the score is changed by 10. But at the same time, this executes here, over on the score itself, it's immediately going into these. And so what happens is this draw score is able to fire and pass in this score to this function here before the score actually gets changed by 10. Now, if I go back to the score thing here, by the time this function comes down and it has uh, here the actual drawing of score here, where you actually create the score, by that point, this is probably fired. Change score by 10 has probably happened. However, the problem is if we come back here, as soon as you pass a variable into here, then suddenly this score that we use down here is a local variable. So we've passed in this score variable, which is 10, and it comes into here. And so as soon as it comes into here, it's locked into being 10 wherever it's used down here. Even though by the time this happens, this score variable here may have changed uh, to 20. But you see the problem here where it's just a game flow issue. I really should never be passing in score unless I'm positive the score has updated to where I want it to be. And I can fix this very easily. So instead of I have when I receive update score here, what if we just went over here to where the score actually changes? Because this is where the score changes. So as soon as it changes, that's really where I want to draw my score on screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come and create a new broadcast message. So I'll come broadcast and I'm just going to go new message and I'm going to call this one draw score. So new broadcast message, draw score, go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to jump back to my score variable here. And so instead of using this update score, when I receive draw score, then I'm going to draw the score. Because I'm now calling it after I've updated the score, I'm going to know that I'm passing in the correct uh, score. So I'm getting rid of that mistake we were making. It was just basically a game flow mistake. That's my mistake, and you're going to make mistakes, and that's okay. So I also want to change this one too, so when I receive draw score. And so now if we jump back to our game, and we hit play, and we do this again, now suddenly we're going to see that 10, 10, 20, 20. So now we have this working score variable and this working score display on screen. So just that easily we were able to solve our problems. So again, you're going to make mistakes. Just stay with it and you're going to learn a lot from solving those mistakes. Okay, we're just about done here, but let me just step into a, a couple other projects real quickly just to show you how you can take this method and easily incorporate it into other projects. So in this project here, you can see that I have um, some other sprites in here where I have this scoreboard up top and I have the score written there. And I'm going to use that same method for populating the score over here. So if I go ahead and start playing the game, we have some stuff going on here, but so I can come in here and anytime I correctly answer one of these math problems here, it updates the score. You see, I'm using the exact same method over here, but I've built it into this custom scoreboard up top. And again, I can put in whatever other graphics or other related things I want here, and I can do this in whatever style I wanted to. And when I set up my initial uh, digits, I could have used a different font. So if I wanted a different font, I could make that totally different. So again, you just have a lot more flexibility when you build your score out this way. Another quick, quick example, this is the same project we're just working on, but if you look at that score over to the left, you'll notice that now anytime I make a contact here that the score fades out. And so now I have this animation built in and every time the score changes, it sort of fades out the old score and populates the new score. So let me just stop for a second and I'll show you that that's really easy to do. So all I did is I went into this draw score code that you remember here. So if I jump into the code to look at how that's being done, all I did is when I receive a draw score message this time, I'm repeating a loop 10 times and I'm changing the ghost effect, which again is built into Scratch, sort of lets you change that opacity. So it slowly goes to zero. And then when I draw a new score here, you can see I just bring it back. So again, every time it's going up by 10 here, it's actually going to 100 would be like completely transparent where you're not going to see it anymore. And then I just bring that back to zero. So you fully see it on screen when we actually draw the score on screen. So it's pretty easy now that we have it in this dynamically, this dynamic variable to come in and do things like add in animations, change the size, change the position on screen. And so one final example of that would be the snake game here. And you can see that I have the score number flying along beside my snake 
updating dynamically as the game goes on. And all I'm doing there is sort of broadcasting the X and Y position of my snake and adjusting the score based on that position. So again, now that we have something that's not just that fixed variable display, but what that's something that's our own variable that we can display on screen dynamically, suddenly now repositioning something on the fly like this is super easy to do. Just peeking at the score variable in that snake game, you'll see when I start as a clone, it is using that snake position. It's adjusting it slightly so it's not right over top of the snake. But again, since we're building it out dynamically, we can go ahead and we can reposition it where if we're using one of these default variables here on screen, something like this variable display, that is not something you'd be able to reposition. But when you're creating the display yourself dynamically, you can. So that's it. That's gonna call, that's gonna bring this tutorial to an end. But I hope you've learned a lot from this. If you did, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more videos about programming like this, hit the subscribe buttons. Share this video with people who might like it. And I hope to talk to you again soon. Have a great day.